Hi everyone and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. Today I want to talk about the joys of fermentation. Um, if you don't love fermentation uh, in one way, shape, or form, you really should. Um, the dairy industry uses bacteria and lactic acid fermentation to make cheese and yogurt. This is one of my favorite cheeses. Um, it's called Raspadura. For those of you who don't know, I am Italian by marriage and we, we travel to Italy uh, once a year to uh, partake of the amazing fermentation products that they have. Check out this Parmigiano cheese. Now that is a lot of cheese. Um, we d also do lactic acid fermentation, by the way. Here's another reason to love it. If uh, you do bodybuilding and, and uh, you're trying to get uh, chiseled muscles, what you're actually doing is pushing your muscles into anaerobic respiration. And um, when the muscles run out of oxygen, uh, they have to do lactic acid fermentation uh, in order to keep supplying the cells with uh, ATP. Uh, but let's get back to some other things that we eat um, that are products of fermentation. Um, fermentation turns soybeans into soy sauce and cabbage into sauerkraut. If your digestive juices aren't flowing just yet, we've also got uh, baking and uh, winemaking that rely on yeast. Yeasts, so yummy. Yeasts are uh, single-celled um, fungi, by the way, in case you didn't know that. And humans have been using yeast and their fermentation capacities for, for thousands and thousands of years. Um, they just found a 9,000-year-old a um, human remains here, a tomb with human remains in China, northern China, and they found uh, pottery containing a fermented drink. Um, 9,000 years, that is really a long time ago. I mean, to put that into perspective, I, I just got to say, do you realize how long ago that was? Because uh, we visited uh, Zosher's Step Pyramid in Saqqara. This was considered sort of the beginning of the Old Kingdom of Egypt. That was 4,600 years ago. So, you know, 9,000 years we've been uh, fermenting uh, fruits in order to make uh, alcoholic beverages. That is that is a long time. So the history of 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 winemaking uh, obviously goes way back. If you go to places like Italy, uh, you have to visit uh, vineyards and and see how the wine is is actually made. Um, Tuscany is certainly one of the most beautiful places on the planet, um, and the wine is just outstanding. If you go to the winery, you'll visit. Uh, you know, see how they make the wine. And the wine is, uh, of course, aged. Um, and you'll notice that, that uh, this is a slightly larger scale here, but there's a lot of gas piping. And you might be wondering what all the piping is for. And actually, this video is going to explain that. So fermentation is the harvesting of chemical energy from organic molecules using an endogenous electron acceptor. Okay, don't panic. Okay, don't panic. Think of pizza. Think of pizza. Relax. Endogenous just means that the electron acceptor comes from within the system. So you don't need anything from the outside. Okay, what do I mean by that? In typical aerobic respiration, where we have not only glycolysis, but also the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain, the electron acceptor, we call it exogenous. It means it comes from the outside. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor. So the electrons stop there. Now you have to keep continually supplying the system with oxygen in order to drive aerobic respiration. And that's kind of the point. So the role of oxygen is to accept the electrons and you make water as a result. It's called metabolic water production. The problem is if oxygen runs out. If oxygen runs out, then you can't keep this system going. And all you can run in the absence of oxygen is glycolysis. So we're going to explore fermentation. We're going to answer a couple of questions, try to get rid of some misconceptions that people have about it. The number one misconception has to be that fermentation produces ATP, which it does not. We're going to see why. Um, we're going to see uh, if anaerobic environments are actually required. We're going to see uh, if anaerobic environments are actually required. And uh, we're going to explore what fermentation is actually for biochemically. Okay, so for the sake of comparison, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens when there is oxygen present, when you do have 
oxygen as a final electron acceptor. Okay. Um, in the first phase, uh, we have the splitting of glucose, right, in the process of glycolysis. Hopefully this is somewhat familiar. I know it's probably your all-time favorite thing in the whole world. We get some ADP, two actually, well, actually four uh, ATPs get produced, but it's only a net of two because it costs you two ATP uh, to run glycolysis. So as glucose is being oxidized to pyruvate, um, of course, you love redox, right? So if something is being oxidized, somebody else has to be reduced. And that somebody else is the electron carrier NAD. Okay, this is something to pay attention to. Um, as NAD picks up those electrons from the splitting of glucose, NAD gets converted to NADH. In aerobic situations, what happens to those electrons that NADH is now carrying is they get transported into the mitochondria and they get sent into the electron transport chain, right? So most of the ATP that is produced in aerobic metabolism comes from uh, chemiosmosis and the electron transport chain. It's extremely efficient. We make, you know, overall about 34 molecules of ATP um, in this process and that's where the electrons end up. This requires oxygen as the final electron acceptor. Um, that's key. What happens if there's no oxygen present? How can we continue to make ATP in the absence of oxygen? Um, that's what we're going to look at next. Okay. So here we have lactic acid fermentation. And um, something should look familiar, and that's this first step. This is still glycolysis. Glycolysis does not change. You still have the production of ATP, and you still have to uh, have an electron carrier to pick up those electrons that are liberated when you're doing those oxidation reactions. Now here's the key. NAD gets reduced to NADH in the process of glycolysis. In aerobic conditions, the NADH donates those electrons to the electron transport chain. But in the absence of oxygen, who is NADH going to donate those electrons to? So here we have a reaction that confuses students all the time because they focus on the product. And the product of lactic acid fermentation is, of course, lactic acid or lactate, right? That's just a, the ionized form of lactate. So lactic acid, lactate, right? Same thing, depends on the pH of the system. The thing about lactic acid or lactate is the cells don't want it. It's a waste product. So why do we do it? Why do we make it? The misconception is that somehow the conversion of pyruvate to lactate produces ATP. It does not. The only reason we run this reaction is because it gives NADH something to donate its electrons to. We regenerate NAD. The key to this whole story is we got to make more of this in order to keep running glycolysis. So lactic acid fermentation does not make ATP. The reason why we run it is to regenerate NAD. Let's look at another example. Here we have alcoholic fermentation. The first part of the story Exactly the same. Glycolysis does not change. This is the only source of ATP production. Same thing. And once again, when glucose is getting oxidized, somebody else must be reduced. Just like in lactic acid fermentation, this product, ethanol, is a waste product and the cells don't like it. In fact, um, you can naturally only produce a wine of about 14% ethanol uh, before the cells actually die. So ethanol is a waste product. They don't run this reaction in order to make it, per se. They run the reaction because you've got to have a place for NADH to donate those electrons. It's the same story. The goal of this 
is to keep the NAD coming so you can keep running glycolysis. Glycolysis is the only source of ATP, but you cannot continually oxidize a carbohydrate without regenerating the endogenous electron carrier. Now, I know that sounds all very confusing, but the reality is you can't keep splitting bonds unless you've got an electron carrier that is constantly ready to accept those electrons. If you don't have oxygen, you have to keep recycling the electron carriers within the cell. So now hopefully you understand what these pipes are for, right? You saw that in alcoholic fermentation, one of the, the other product, in addition to ethanol, is carbon dioxide. So if you don't have an outlet for that gas, right, um, you could have an explosion. As always, I'd like to thank you for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please like and comment and subscribe. You can also follow on Twitter and Facebook. As always, I hope this was helpful. Good luck.